I had Valentine's Day date with my partner a few years ago. We dined at a very upscale and excellent restaurant. You had to make reservations for the restaurant, which was one of those with a high price tag, and you had to dress nicely. We didn't frequently eat at such upscale establishments. However, it was great on Valentine's Day, a special occasion. After supper, we intended to see a flick. While we were heading outside to my vehicle in the parking area after leaving the restaurant, I noticed a dude kind of standing beside my car. I had my car sort of tucked up at the rear of the parking area. I was therefore rather shocked to see this. The man, who was in a suit, observed me approaching him, but said nothing. I suppose he was perhaps anticipating something or somebody. He was maybe two meters or so away from the front of my car. I shouted hello when I was near him, but the guy did not reply. He just averted his gaze and moved forward a little. After getting in, we sped off to a nearby movie theater, which was approximately ten minutes away. The theater was rather crowded. I departed to use the restroom after we had taken our seats. The very same man in a suit was once more standing near the restrooms and gazing in a different direction as I walked down the theater's hallway. He never once glanced at me. I knew it was him as I drew nearer. After using the restroom, I returned to the cinema to find my girlfriend and informed her about the person I had seen. She first believed I was kidding and began to chuckle until I clarified that I wasn't. We weren't sure what to make of it at all. However, let's just believe that was an odd accident. We ultimately forgot about it, for the most part. We left the theater after the film ended since we didn't spot the man anywhere in the building or the parking area. We returned to my apartment to watch TV and enjoy some beverages. My girlfriend urged me to come and peek out the window just over an hour after I got home while I was switching the television's channels. I approached it and peered outside from underneath. I had a third-floor apartment. Therefore, it was somewhat elevated but not very high. I noticed the very same individual in a suit standing by the side of the road. Now I was certain that this was not a coincidence. This time, he seemed to be talking on the phone. I was positive that this was the same person. Now we were both feeling quite uneasy. At this time, I had had enough and decided to walk downstairs and face the man. After departing the apartment, I went down the stairs and entered the lobby. I walked out the door and over to the person's location in the street, but he was gone when I arrived. I took a short stroll down the street and took in my surroundings. There was no sign of him. I then returned to the apartment and asked my girlfriend about the direction the man had gone. She claimed that after approaching the apartment complex, he disappeared from view. This worried us since there was a good chance that demand existed inside our apartment complex. That night, it took me a while to get to sleep. However, nothing unusual occurred, till I eventually nodded off. I must have fallen asleep at about two in the morning, but the sound of a tap on our apartment door woke me up. I silently stood up and moved toward it. I turned to face the group but saw no one. My girlfriend and I agreed that the man in the suit had to be the culprit. What did he seek from us, though? There were no additional knocks for the remainder of the evening. We never did see that man again. But I constantly pondered who he was and why we kept bumping into each other. What I'm going to tell you occurred on Valentine's Day the previous year. I'm a woman who lives alone in a modest home around ten minutes from a big metropolis. I moved from a flat in another town and have been living in this house for nearly three years. Since I hadn't been dating for quite a while, I had been single for a while. Instead, I had been mostly concentrating on my business, which was hectic at this time of year. Then it so happened to be Valentine's Day early one morning. And as usual, I woke up at 6 a.m. I saw a note on my doorstep with a flower on top as soon as I walked out of my front door. When I picked it up, I noticed that while it bore my name, it bore no mailing address. It was odd since, at this hour of the morning, I knew someone had to personally deliver the letter and its contents to my front step rather than mail them. I brought them both inside since I was quite interested in learning who this was from. 
My excitement turned to dread when I read the letter. The letter was typed up, and it opened by praising my appearance and stating how kind I was. Then it continued by outlining a few of my regular activities. Whoever wrote it ultimately added, We were destined to be together. They didn't leave their names, though, and there was no hint of where it was coming from. I snapped a picture of it and texted it to a group of my pals to find out whether one of them had done it in jest. I sincerely did not believe they would act in that manner, and as expected, they all disputed it. However, they did find it to be very humorous. I considered all the potential suspects, but I did not have any strong theories as to who they may have been. I decided to let it go and move on. I noticed something on my front step again that evening when I got home from work. Why don't you celebrate Valentine's Day with me? It asked on a heart-shaped piece of paper. I grabbed it, walked inside, and told my closest buddy about it over the phone. We had a long conversation, which helped me feel better. But after hanging up, sometime later, I heard a bang from my front door as I was in my living room. By this time, it was dark. So I became skeptical of it right away. I moved closer to the entrance, but no one was present. I thought I glimpsed a man moving down the sidewalk in the opposite direction out of the corner of my eye. Of course, I only briefly glanced at him. Thus, I had no meaningful way of describing him. When I opened the door, the front step was empty of any fresh letters or other items. I was starting to get worried about whoever it was. However, I was unsure if there was any need to report it to the police or something similar. Nothing had been threatened against me, so it appeared that everything may have been a prank. I also wanted to avoid overreacting. I could not help but be anxious about who it had been though. My dearest friend returned my call and I accepted her offer to come over and spend the night with me. She was not too far away and arrived in only fifteen minutes. The rest of the evening saw no further action. The following day, everything appeared to be in order. I returned to work as normal, and I was relieved to discover that there were no emails or other items when I came home. I assumed whatever occurred was only a Valentine's Day hoax, but I was still curious about who it was. But I wasn't that concerned anymore. But approximately two days later, while I was returning from work, I noticed a note on my front step once more. When I saw it, I had a horrible feeling. When I entered, I read the letter inside the mailer. Another letter was written by hand. I've been monitoring you, as stated. I hope you like the Valentine's Day card I sent you recently. I also repeatedly banged on your door and I will be back tomorrow when you come home from work. When I read this, I could not comprehend it, and all of a sudden, I had the terrifying impression that I was not at all alone. From my front door, I immediately hurried outside to my vehicle. I was in my vehicle, which was secure. I took a car to the local police station. I explained everything. They ultimately conducted an investigation and had an investigator spend a few days in my home. I doubt they ever discovered the perpetrators. However, I never had another incident like that. A few weeks before Valentine's Day, this took place the previous year. Age-wise, I was 19 at the time. I was also a pretty bashful child. Every female I saw either disregarded me or did not show up to be eager to speak to me at all. Anyway, I was out with Peter, my best buddy at the time, in a restaurant. We were discussing a wide range of topics, but primarily sports. I finally asked him for some dating counsel. Since he had a girlfriend at that time, I was aware that I could talk to him about this kind of stuff. I confessed to Peter that I was sick and weary of all the girls ignoring me. Peter then instructed me to get my phone. He also got out and explained to me how he met his girlfriend on a dating website. Peter assists me by elaborating on such topics as how to create a strong profile. Just a few hours later, I was putting up the profile in my room at home. I looked for the best possible photo of myself. I used it for my profile thereafter. I used the app for a time after that in the hopes of finding some matches. After that, I decided to watch some television in my room 
while waiting for my phone to ring to let me know I'd paired with somebody. I had my doubts and didn't truly believe it would work. However, my phone was ringing after only a little time. I reached for my phone to check what it was. I recognized the message as coming from the dating service, and it informed me that we had matched. I selected it by clicking. I discovered that it matched a woman named Clara. When I went to her profile, I discovered Clara's photo. She had sparkling blue eyes and black hair, and we were both the same age. She was also grinning and flashing her pearly white teeth while donning a blue outfit. I felt a grin coming on. I was going to start a conversation with the first girl I saw. I so decided to just say hi to her to begin our conversation. Clara replied with a greeting a minute later. She appeared pretty sweet, and we ended up talking. Then, rather than just chatting with Clara, I asked if I could see her. She genuinely responded with yes. She invited me to meet her at her home, she said. She then provided me with her home address. She informed me that if I chose to, I could drive over that very same night. I nodded in agreement and saluted her. I cut off our conversation with Clara and began getting dressed. That evening, it was a little chilly outside, so I put on some thick clothing. I then jumped into my car after grabbing my cell from my bed. I messaged her and let her know I was on my way. I was reflecting on how fortunate I was while I was traveling down the road. On the first night, I used the dating app. I was about to date a female. And when I informed Peter about it, I was eager to hear what he would say. I suddenly became aware that the road I was traveling on was turning more and more into a mere forest as I proceeded to make my way to Clara's house. Every few minutes, I would pass past a home, although there were hardly any lamps, and it appeared that I was traveling across a desert. In actuality, I traveled to her home in about an hour. After getting out of my car, I messaged Clara to let her know I had arrived. The home I was standing in front of appeared to be about to collapse as I looked up at it. Despite having a horrible sensation, I chose to continue walking up to the front door. As I was doing this, I saw the front lawn's grass was knee-high. I sent her yet another message, letting her know I was standing in front of the residence and asking her to let me know whether this was the correct location. She confirmed her presence by sending a message and to simply enter and yell her name. I seized the doorknob and carefully opened it as I entered the home. It was dirty and gloomy inside, I noted. Neither Clara nor anybody else did I see. I then attempted to message Clara once again, but the app was broken. I wasn't receiving many services on my cell phone, and the Wi-Fi connection was weak. I decided to take a stroll to locate her. I then entered the lounge room. I saw a lot of dated furniture. Then I observed vivid blue clothing dangling from the ceiling. In a few of the images Clara had on her profile, I saw her wearing the identical one, and I noted that. Then I noticed that the garment was wearing a black wig. The fact that his hair appeared to be black in the images truly perplexed me, so I shouted for Clara in the hopes that she would overhear me. But at that very moment, in the most ominous tone, behind me, I heard a yeah. I almost fell in and smacked the ceiling. When I turned back, Clara was not there. The only person, not a girl, was in front of me. It was a man dressed in a dark hoodie. He was dressed in blue pants and had the collar up. He flashed me a spooky grin and a wink as soon as I discovered he had brown hair. I questioned who he was, but he remained silent. He gave me the scariest smile a person could muster while pointing to the blue garment wearing the wig. Then I saw that he was holding something. It looked like a rifle. He ordered me to turn over all I had on me in a booming voice. He then produced a bag. I was hesitant to challenge him. I consequently took everything from my pocket and put it in his bag. I was even wearing a watch. Then, the man began to back away from me. I quickly saw him go through the front door. Although I felt comforted, my fear persisted. I was eventually able to move my legs once again, and I hurried outside to go to my car. Fortunately, I never ran upon that weirdo again, but he had all I owned. I returned to Peter's place by car and told them everything after that. 
When the cops arrived, I explained to him all of it after he had phoned them. It turned out that the person who had let me inside the residence was also posing as a Hiva girl. She also wasn't there. That's why I saw the blue dress and wig in the home's living room. Additionally, the guy didn't own the ancient, vacant house, which didn't even belong to him. The unsettling fact is that the cops never located the man. But ever afterward, I've stopped using dating apps.